we've got a very special guest with us today, the one and only Kaleo Kala. In the flesh, he's a real person, I verified myself, and uh, he has come to visit the Wood Whisperer shop, and oh. well, how long have you been in the States now? Uh, I've been in the States for going on about f a week. A week? And it's great to be here. Nice, nice. Yeah, he, um, for those of you who don't know, first of all, Kaleo is a student of, what's the official name of the school? Uh, the official name of the school is, is the Australian School of Fine Furniture uh, at the University of Tasmania. Exactly, that's it's what I was going to say. Long name. <laughs> um, but it was, what, a two-year program? Yeah, and... two-year program uh, in, in furniture design and furniture making, hand skills, stuff like that. Nice. You graduate, it's which I don't really think it really matters, but you graduate with a degree in furniture design. Okay. So I guess I'm a college graduate. You're a college grad, you got yeah. a degree now? In you gotta put it up design. on your wall. Yeah, <laughs> post it up next to I have my biology degree right over there. It's, it's very useful in the so everybody shop. Everybody comes to my shop and go, oh wow, this guy's certified. <laughs> there you go. Like it matters. Cool, no, that's awesome. So um, tell us about, cause it's interesting. Now you've, you've been into school, now you're coming out. What kind of shop you have at home? What, what kind of equipment? And I'm sure going into school, you focused a lot on hand tools. So what do you think yeah. you're gonna do in terms of your functional shop where now you need to make money? Yeah. And if a hand tool isn't the easiest way to get from point A to point B, you're gonna go back to a power tool. So I'm curious, what, you know, what is your shop? What do you have in terms of tooling? And what might you change now that you've been through this class? Uh, the shop, my shop's pretty basic. You know, I've got a Unisaw. Okay. Um, Delta, mostly Delta stuff, a six inch joiner, drill press, right. things like that. So I've got a basic shop that I think I could produce things with, but mm -hmm. uh, you know, honestly, it's gonna be um, really hard to produce a lot of work or a lot of something. I really see being more production oriented. Okay. So my, 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 my thoughts on hand tools, I love hand tools, I love using them, but they're, as soon as I have to pick up this hand tool, I lose money. Because right. it takes me more time to use this than it does to use the joiner sure, or to sure. use the thicknesser. So, you know, they have their place, um, at least in my, my, my view, so they have their place in any shop. Right. Yeah. But in, in a commercial shop, I think they're, they're used for fine tuning. They're not used for, right, yeah. for the bulk of the work. Sure, sure. So then how do you, how do you foresee, because this is a little bit different than the way that I ran my business initially. Um, I was just waiting till commissions came along. I, I might fill the extra time by building some stupid little thing for the house, but for the most part, it, I waited until I got a phone call and someone said, I want this piece made, and then I'd make it. So it sounds like in terms of production, and you're sort of building things on spec, but build, maybe building multiples at the same time and trying to sell them? Like, how is that strategy going to work? Oh, you know, I, I foresee it more as in trying to... Because I don't want to rely solely on commissions because I don't right. think there are as many commissions out there. Yeah, it's not as reliable. But at the same time, I don't want to be just a gallery guy yeah. because I don't like the fact that galleries can take up to 60, 70 percent of, of commissions of what, you, of what you sell. It's just, it's just kind of nuts. Yeah. But, you know, I think to start out, it'll be one of those, one of those things, you know, I, I, look out, I, lo I look out for any uh, exhibition or competition I can enter and I just mm -hmm. send work in there trying to get accepted. Um, trying to kind of spread that name, my name out there so that people see what I do. Sure. And then uh, hopefully commissions would roll in. And I also really want to make, I, I, w I like to design production oriented anything. So if I make uh, a table, say a hall table or a sofa table, I can make multiples of them rather quickly mm -hmm. so that they, the cost per item comes down. Right. That's what right. I want to do. Okay. And uh, hopefully be able to sell them. I'm, I think my... As much as I hate, I, I hate galleries, I think that's where, in the beginning at least, is where I'm gonna have to go to get, right. to get a customer. Right, yeah. So. Um, now let me ask you, I think a lot of people are probably completely, you know, the concept of going away for two years to learn <laughs> woodworking is a completely foreign concept. Yeah. In just a very real fast snapshot, how would you describe the path of those two years from thing, you know, what you learned yeah. and what, what kind of things they, they were teaching you during that time frame? Oh, um, you know, I, I decided, about three years ago that I wanted to venture into woodworking as a, as a, as a full-time job. Yeah. And I knew, I'd always done it my whole life with my dad was a carpenter, a cabinet maker, and I knew that I needed to be classically trained. Right. I just, I figured if I was going to, if I was going to do it myself, I was going to train myself, it's going to take me a decade to do. <laughs> yeah, it's just, a lot of work. Yeah, it's a lot of work. I didn't have the facilities yeah. at the time. I had, you know, I had a shop at mom's house and I was living an hour away and sure. it was just, it was, it just couldn't be done. So I figured if I go to school, I can cram two years, uh, 10 years of experience in two years. Two years, yeah. 
And it, it really was like that. It was, it was full on. We worked from 8.30 till 5.30 every day. It's like uh, a full-time job then. It, it was a full-time job with yeah. no pay, that I'm paying to do. <laughs> yeah, you're paying for the privilege to work. <laughs> yeah. You know, but it was good. You know, we go you, really quickly. We buzzed through the first semester of, of, of my schooling was all hand tool work. Yeah. We, didn't, we didn't get to touch a machine until we wow. got to tour the machine shop and go, ooh, ah, oh, look at that table saw, yeah. look at that 20-inch joiner. We didn't get to touch it for six months. Now, does that kill you? I mean, because you've had machine experience before that, right? And you're like, yeah. I'm not a kid. I, can, you know, I know what to do with that. It, it, it was hell. Yeah. It was hell because, can I say hell? Uh, you could say anything you want. <laughs> I guess we're right we're on the internet, huh? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it was just, you had this beautifully set up machine shop and we couldn't, we couldn't, couldn't do anything. Touch anything. Wow. We had to be like signed off on the machine for insurance purposes, of course, sure, and all yeah. these things. And, you know, you have to realize that when you're going into a class like this, not everybody comes in at the same level. Sure, yeah. You know, some yeah. people have a lot of experience. Some people had absolutely none. And so they can't just let you go in willy-nilly and just work on the machines. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. So how long did it take before you really got to the point that you were just building stuff? Um, probably about the, after the first semester. We, we built little things in the first mm -hmm. semester. We, like, you know, we built a little uh, water stone box to hold our water stones in. Okay. And just little tiny things like that, right. all out of hand tools. And then you cut hundreds of sets of dovetails just to practice hand cut dovetails and that's sure, all sure. we did for the first semester and then after that it was just straight building in the first year we were given all our projects mm -hmm. so they just handed us okay you're going to build this so they'd hand us like pretty much uh, plans okay. for a little chest of drawers excuse me and stuff like that and then the second year was all about just custom designing your own stuff it was four four major projects okay so i mean it it it, it kind of throws you in the deep end which I know you've said before, is the best place to be because it makes yeah. you learn. Sure. You have, to, you have to adapt or you drown. Sure, absolutely. Very cool. That's, it just sounds like an awesome experience. I think it's something that you can draw on for the rest of your life. Now. Yeah, I'd great. recommend it to anybody. If yeah. anybody, I mean, we went to Australia because, just because we wanted to go to Australia. It was the only reason <laughs> we went to Australia. My, my wife really wanted to go to Australia. So yeah. that's, that's why we went. It wasn't... We didn't go well, for you kind of need you, you kind of need her to be on board, I yeah. would think, to, to get any of this off the ground. Yeah, had to appease her if you could let me go do go to school. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. <laughs>